A farmer is giving a tour of his farm to his cousin from the city. They come upon a pig that has a peg leg. The cousin asks what the story is behind the peg leg pig. The farmer tells him that there is a special pig. One day I was on my tractor and it overturned on me and I was pinned underneath it. I figured I was done for. Then that pig appeared out of nowhere and dug me out from under the tractor and saved my life. Wow. That's some pig. But how did it lose its leg though? The cousin asks him. The farmer replies. Well, one time in the middle of the night the house caught on fire while we were all asleep. That pig just set up a squealing and a squealing like to wake the dead. It woke us all up and we were able to get out of the house in time. It saved all our lives. That really is a special pig, says the cousin. But that still doesn't explain how he lost his leg. The farmer looks at him with consternation and says, Well, a pig like that you don't eat all at once. <laughs> Two Russian policemen are walking down the road on patrol when they encounter a penguin crossing the street. One says to the other, One of us should get him and take him to the zoo. The other volunteers tell the first to wait until he returns, pick up the penguin, and head off down the street. The first officer stands waiting for half an hour, an hour, two hours. Finally after almost three hours, the second policeman comes back still holding the penguin. The officer who stayed is exasperated. What took you so long, and why do you still have the penguin? Was the zoo closed? No, the second replied. It was open. We had a very nice time. I think I'm going to take him to the movies now. <laughs> a programmer and his project manager board a train headed through the mountains. They can find no other place to sit, except for two seats right across the aisle from a young woman and her grandmother. After a while, it becomes quite clear that the woman and the programmer are interested in each other, as they keep looking at each other. Soon, the train passes into a tunnel and it is pitch black. There is the sound of a kiss followed by the sound of a slap. When the train finally emerges from the tunnel, the four sit there without saying a word. The grandmother thinks to herself, It was very rude of that young man to kiss my granddaughter, but I am glad she slapped him. The project manager thinks to himself, I did not think the programmer was brave enough to kiss the woman, but I wish she hadn't missed him when she slapped me. The young woman thought to herself, I am glad the guy kissed me, but I wish my grandmother had not slapped him. The programmer has a satisfied smile on his face and thinks, Life is good. How often does a guy have a chance to kiss a beautiful woman and slap his project manager at the same time? <laughs> a kid asks his grandmother, How come I've never seen you and grandpa fight? I see mom and dad fight from time to time, but I've never seen you and granddaddy fight. Why is that? Well, says the grandma, we got married in the old church in the middle of town. After the marriage ceremony, we hopped on our horse carriage. It was a long time ago when horse carriages were still a thing, and cars were just starting to come around. And we went our way to our farm, which was a bit away from town. But halfway there, the horse stopped, and it refused to start walking again. So your grandpa got down, stood in front of the horse, looked it directly at his eyes and said, One. He got up on the carriage again, and the horse started walking, I thought that would be it. But then a few miles ahead, the horse again stopped and refused to keep walking. The horse was not tired, thirsty, or hungry, he was just being stubborn. So your grandpa got down, stood in front of the horse looked directly at his eyes, and said too, he hopped on and we continued our way, with the horse walking again. When we were almost at the farm, the horse decided to stop again, and wouldn't walk, your grandpa got down looked the horse directly in its eyes, and as he said three, he pulled out his the horse right between the eyes. For a second I was just stunned, he calmly started walking towards the carriage and I started yelling at him, what's wrong with you? Why did you do that? Now how are we going to get the carriage to the farm? Why did you have Tio shoot the horse? He looked me directly at my eyes and said one. <laughs> the bay king was missing his mistress who was living far away. He decided to pay her a visit wearing his more expensive clothes. But out of precaution, he decided to first ask his wazir, minister, of whether whether there would be rain on that day. 
The Wazir paused for five minutes, assessing the clouds, counting them, comparing their shapes and colors, and writing down gibberish on an expensive silk paper. At the end, he went to the bay and said, Sire, there will be no rain this week. If anything, there are risks of drought. That made the bay happy and he went along on his journey. While on the road, he crossed paths with an old hooded man having a donkey. The bay said, Hey you old thing, can't you see from the blue of the sky and the heat of the sun that it won't rain? Why are you wearing a hooded coat? To which the old man answered, I thank your majesty for the concerns, but you shouldn't be wearing these summer clothes for it will rain today before sunset. The bay didn't want to waste time there so he just kept on going thinking the old man was crazy. Obviously it rained while the bay was midway through. And believe me when I say that it was rain like it never rained before since Noah's flood. The bay arrived tired and soaked to his mistress who couldn't help but laugh at the sight of the most powerful man in the country in such a poor state. Needless to say, he didn't get some that night. Days later when the storm got dissipated and he finally got back to his castle, he fired the wazir and summoned the old man. That man showed up in court with his donkey. The bay didn't seem to care and said, Oh wise elder, you managed to predict the rain when even my most educated expert could not. Would you please take his place and become my wazir of weather? To which the old man responded, My king, I cannot accept, for I know nothing of weather. It is my donkey that is mighty for it raises its ears when sun will shine and lay them down when rain will set. I see, the bay said. In that case, it is the donkey that will now be my minister. And it is since that day that we Tunisians have the custom of having donkeys in the government. <laughs> a prosecuting attorney called his first witness, a grandmotherly, elderly woman to the stand. He approached her and asked Mrs. Jones, do you know me? She responded, why, yes, I do know you, Mr. Williams. I've known you since you were a boy, and frankly, you've been a big disappointment to me. You lie, you cheat on your wife, and you manipulate people and talk about them behind their backs. You think you're a big shot when you haven't the brains to realize you'll never amount to anything more than a two-bit paper pusher. Yes, I know you. The lawyer was stunned. Not knowing what else to do, he pointed across the room and asked Mrs. Jones, do you know the defense attorney? She again replied, why yes I do. I've known Mr. Bradley since he was a youngster, too. He's lazy and bigoted, and he has a drinking problem. He can't build a normal relationship with anyone, and his law practice is one of the worst in the entire state. Not to mention he cheated on his wife with three different women. One of them was your wife. Yes, I know him. The defense attorney nearly died. The judge asked both counselors to approach the bench and, in a very quiet voice, said, If either of you idiots asks her if she knows me, I'll send you both to the electric chair. <laughs>